All right, this is Kenneth with another clock. As you can see, most notably about this clock is it's entirely implemented in TTL logic gates. It's in 24 hour time, so the hours are up here, tens being the two LEDs and ones being a seven segment display. So right now one LED is lit, which means it's 17, which means it's 5 p.m., 23 minutes and 24, 25 seconds. From an operational standpoint, what we have is we have a CMOS 4001 NOR gate with a crystal and two capacitors and some resistors hooked up as a crystal oscillator. The crystal is a 32768 Hz quartz crystal, which is convenient because it is a power of two. I use three 74161s, which are divided by 16 counters, and half of a 7493 is a divided by 8 counter which divides the 32,000 hertz signal down to 1 hertz. At this point we have a 1 hertz pulse which feeds over to this first 74,160 divided by 10 counter. The four uh, lines of binary coded decimal coming out of this are fed up, which are, is also shown on these LEDs, is fed up to the 7447 binary coded decimal to 7 segment decoder. Current limiting resistors and a display up here shows the current ones of seconds. The carry pulse from the 160 is fed over to a 74.93 divided by 16 counter, but it um, this counter has the 2 and the 4 line fed into an AND gate. This is because we want this counter for the tens of seconds to not roll over at 16, but to roll over at 6. So since 2 and 4 make 6, when that requirement is met, the AND gate goes high, and that's connected to the reset line on the set 93. So, as you just saw, when it reached 6, it instantly reset and pulsed the carry line for the next stage over. The next stage over is the ones of minutes, but this is a little bit more complicated because we also want buttons down here to be able to set the current time. The buttons are fed into a 74123, which is a mono, dual monostable oscillator. This is because the button presses by themselves would cause one to three dozen clock pulses, and we only want one per button press. Uh, the capacitors and resistors are calculated for about a quarter second, a little bit less than a quarter second pulse, so that way you can sit here and in, uh, increment the minutes rather quickly. So. The 123's output and the carry from the tens of seconds are fed through an OR gate to combine them and then fed up to the clock pulse on another 7493. Actually, this is a uh, 120 since it doesn't need to be cut short, which then feeds up to a 47 and displays the one, ones of minutes. I also have the decimal point tied low just to sh indicate place value. All right, so the carry line from the 74160 gets fed over to another 93 over here in the clock, which is again cut short with an AND gate to only do six. And then the carry from that is fed back into and is fed back to this OR gate since it's a quad OR gate in a 740, uh, 7432, along with the hours bu uh, button from the 123. So they're combined here and then fed over into the clock pulse on the hours. But the hours consists of two 7493s. The first one's cut short at 10 by the AND gate, and then them combined together is cut short at 24. Um, that way, every, this, this, uh, the first digit can count up to 9 and then roll over at 10 and then increment the hours. And then once all of it together reaches 24, it gets cut short again so that you have a 24 hour cycle per the days. The output of the tens place for the 7493 is fed through an inverter, it is a 7404, um, since we want these two LEDs to be active low. Um, the, uh, I used a pair of diodes out on the output of this inverter to make the low, low LED, a, um, use the two diodes as a passive OR gate, essentially so that on tens of hours the bottom LED would be lit and on 20 of hours like so they would both be lit then once it rolls over at the end of the day it's there neither of them lit or and it's three o'clock in the morning alright so that's that's the whole thing uh, if you have any questions make sure to ask me in the comments